Today we're going to be pairing a 3060 with a $20 i3 to see if it's actually as bad as it sounds. It's likely going to bottleneck the system, and that's basically when weaker components of a computer are holding back stronger ones because they can't keep up. So I decided to pair a $300 graphics card with a computer I got from Goodwill to see how bad the bottleneck is and if it actually makes a difference. The processor we'll be using is the i3-4130. It came out back in September of 2013 and offered decent performance at a price point of $120. That being said, it was still quite cut down and was very much a low-end processor. It doesn't support overclocking, and it comes locked at 3.4 gigahertz. But although it only has two cores, it does support hyper-threading, and is the only reason I still consider it usable. It also has four threads, a TDP of 54 watts, and the Intel HD 4400 integrated graphics. The low TDP and iGPU especially made it ideal for low-powered commercial computers, and was often seen in OEM systems. The test system we'll be using was originally exactly that, the Prodesk 400 G1 by HP. When I bought it for $25, it had 8 gigs of RAM and a hard drive, but I've since upgraded to 16 gigs of RAM and I threw in a SSD. I'll also be running Windows 7 because although the 4130 is a decent processor, the performance of using Windows 10 isn't really worth it. For the graphics card, we're going to be using the ASUS RTX 3060, which I chose because it's the only thing that fits in the case. The computer's had a rough life, and I've cut a hole in the back, lost the front end, the side panel, the hard drive caddy, and I broke the front I.O. But it still works, so I threw in the 3060, installed the drivers, and started testing it out. First, I needed a baseline benchmark that mostly depended on just the GPU. For this, I used Firestrike by 3D Mark, and I ran the test with the stock clock speeds. I ended up getting a graphics score of about 22,000, which put me in the 55th percentile and was roughly on par with other 3060s. This meant that by itself, the 3060 was working properly and performing as expected. So I needed to run some games on it to answer the burning question of, can you play games with a 3060 and a 10-year-old i3? Now, I wanted to start off with something that heavily relied on the CPU performance and chose Minecraft. I used used the middle of the road settings for the graphics, but decided on a render distance of only 8 chunks. The game version I was using was the latest release, 1.19.3, and got an average of 190 frames per second. This sounds good, but in reality, it wasn't. Whenever the game had to load in new chunks, the CPU would spike to 100% and the frame rate would plummet. On the other hand, the GPU rarely exceeded 50% utilization, and our bottleneck was already painfully apparent. However, the game was playable and mostly stable, and aside from the occasional drop in frame rate, was the ideal experience. However, I wanted to make the i3 suffer, so I hopped into some BeamNG Drive. I didn't hold back for this one, and I cranked everything to the ultra settings, which in retrospect wasn't a great idea. In going from low to ultra, I effectively froze the game for a minute or two while the i3 was struggling to keep up. I also chose the map that was a little harder to run than most others, but in the end, the i3 was able to pull through and got an average frame rate of 41. The GPU was at about 35% utilization, but the i3 was at about 80. Although it was bottlenecked, there was still just enough performance, and the i3 was able to offer a decent experience. Given this, I tried out some GTA 5, and this game stressed the CPU more than any other. I maxed out the settings, hopped into some single player, and immediately saw the struggling i3 pinned at 100%. The GPU, on the other hand, was at less than half, and was only using 3 out of its 12 gigs of VRAM. I wanted to say that it ran well, but it was by no means great. The average frame rate came to be 48, but it did often dip down to the mid-20s and the lower 30s. It's nowhere near what the card would have got had it been paired with a halfway decent processor. And if it's not yet apparent, pairing these two together should be widely regarded as a bad move. This time, instead of making it suffer, I wanted to see where the i3 could shine. For this, I actually ran some PUBG. I'd say it's still a semi-demanding game, but this old processor made light work of it. I maxed out the settings to the ultra quality, hopped into a match, and got an average frame rate of 71. As per usual, the CPU was at about 90%, while the 3060 sat around 50, but the game was still running well. I didn't encounter any problems during the gameplay test, and was surprised at how well the i3 handled it. It was actually playable, and not piddling about in the lower 30s like GTA. And I did test a few more games, but that just about sums it up. I ran CSGO with the high settings, got about 120 FPS, but that's because my capture card is limited by the DVI bandwidth. I also played Rust with the highest settings, which ran well and got an average frame rate of 42, but I did get disconnected from the server after just a few minutes, yet I think that's my internet's fault rather than the i3s. So overall, the performance varied more than I expected. By this, I mean that some modern games like PUBG ran flawlessly, while others like GTA 5 did not perform very well. This makes sense because different games are going to utilize different bits of specific hardware to varying degrees, but it was a greater disparity than I anticipated. So, should you do this? I mean, probably not. If you can afford a 3060, you can probably at least afford a decent Ryzen, and unsurprisingly, a 10-year-old i3 isn't a great part for a gaming computer. 
But can you do it? Yes. I mean, it's not going to run most modern games well, but it's still able to get them playable. If everything died in your computer tomorrow and you were left with just a GPU, I suppose this could tide you over for a while, but it's far from being a long-term solution. Also, a side note, but I had to run all the tests in 720p. The 3060 doesn't have a DVI output for my DVI splitter that I use with my capture card and monitor, so I had to use my capture card as a monitor via a second computer running OBS, and the capture card is kind of trash and only supports up to 720p at 60fps. That was a mouthful, but the point is that you should like, subscribe, or leave a comment because it helps me out, and it's nice to be able to afford better parts for the channel without being stuck using 15-year-old hardware. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the the official Jane Knight Discord server in the description, alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to them. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.